Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So today I'll be doing my settings guide. Settings are pretty important in League of Legends, so we're gonna cover all the hotkeys. Then we're gonna go over kind of the general settings like video settings, mouse settings, interface settings, all the stuff like that. And finally, we'll go over all the kind of stuff that's in the interface and game section, just those things that you can kind of turn on and off and which ones of those are important. As always, everything is timestamped below, so let's get into it. All right, so getting started with the hotkeys, for the most part, you can leave everything as default. Um, I just QWER, DNF for my sums, and I only have three of my items bound. I find that when I play mid, I never really need more than three active items. Although if you play something like support, where you have like wards and pinks and then like active items on top of that, you might find you need more of these. If you do, you can just bind them to more numbers, um, or you can bind them to keys on, you know, like stuff like T, like something a lot of people do is they have their ward on T. Personally, I just have it on four, it's kind of whatever, but basically just whatever is comfortable. And I don't think you normally need more than three anyway. Um, but after that, let's go ahead and click quick cast all. I think this is really important, like quick casting is significantly faster and almost every ability in the game benefits from being quick cast in terms of speed. Now, this is not the case for literally everything in the game. So what I would recommend is having quick cast with indicator bound to stuff. Um, so for abilities like Vega E, for example, if you just cast, just quick cast, it can be kind of hard to sometimes see like who you're going to hit with it. Um, but if you have quick cast uh, with indicator bound to something, it allows you to still cast stuff quickly, um, but also give you that little indicator there. So I highly recommend binding that. I think that's pretty important too. Another thing is make sure to set up a self cast. So this is only important for some champions, but if you're playing any champion with some sort of um, ability that can be cast them themselves. So if we play something like uh, Zillion or Karma, it's really useful to have this key to just immediately cast it on yourself without having to move your mouse to yourself. Uh, so that can be quite good, you know, if you're like harassing your opponent, but you also want to shield yourself at the same time without having to move your mouse back and stuff. Next, coming down to player movement, something I would recommend is binding attack move click. Um, now what this does is it means you don't have to click in addition to just like pressing your attack move, you can actually just press A. Um, so I use this a lot, um, it allows you to obviously kite a bit easier. Um, you can use it just to move around, you know, obviously if you're not near anyone. Um, and I find that saves quite a bit. I talked about this a bit in my mechanics guide, but it does save you quite a bit of inputs. So I would highly recommend that. There is also a setting, I forget, it's either an interface or game, but we're gonna cover it later where it, attacks mo it attack moves closest to your cursor. That's gonna be important to turn on. Um, but for now, just like set this to A. Moving on to camera control, if you do want to play at a high level eventually, I do think F keys are kind of important to that. So I think this can be kind of whatever is comfortable for you. Personally, I bound these to my mouse. So these are buttons I have on the side of my mouse. I use the Razor Trinity, um, if you guys are wondering. So this can just be like F1 through F4. Um, if it's something that's kind of comfortable for you personally, I didn't really like it that much. So I bound it to my mouse instead. So I think, yeah, this can be quite useful. I will make a guide on F keys in general, but um, for now, you can kind of ignore it, especially if you're new to the game, but it might be something you think about later. What is quite important here, though, is that you have a way to center your camera on champions. I'll quickly use this as an opportunity to talk about locked camera versus unlocked camera. So personally, I think unlocked camera is a lot better being able to move your camera um, around whatsoever. You can play locked camera and your camera moves with you, but personally, I don't think this is that good. Um, but what a lot of people do, and one reason that I think this is important, well, it's important for several reasons, but one big reason is that a lot of people, um, when they play team fights, will actually just hold down spacebar, for example, to keep their camera centered on themselves. Now, I think at a high level, this probably isn't the best, but I think if you're struggling a lot with keeping track of yourself in team fights, this can be really effective. Um, it's also really important that when, especially if you start F keying, but just when you're looking at other way lanes in general, that you have a really quick way to go back to your character because you don't want it to be that you're like looking up here and then suddenly you get attacked and then you have to like pan your camera all the way back to mid or you have to click on the mini map. You just want that instant, just like get back to mid. So I would recommend um, binding that. In communication, I think you can leave pretty much everything as default, although something you do need to bind is the area as warded ping. So personally, I bound this to shift V, but again, it doesn't really matter what you bind it to, but I do think this is pretty important to bind, um, especially if you're playing mid, it's important to kind of keep track of the enemy's wards. Um, it makes your jungler's job a lot, lot easier. And also you can just use it to kind of like communicate a lot of information in the mid game and stuff. So if I recall correctly, this actually isn't bound by default. So it's definitely something you, you should go and um, bind. I think shift V is probably the easiest way to do this. And you're going to start using a lot. Like if it's something you don't use now, it's definitely going to become something you use quite a lot because uh, it's really, really useful. 
So the rest of the keybinds you can pretty much leave as default. Obviously you can change specific things to your needs and I really feel like don't be afraid to do something weird. You know, if you find something comfortable and it works for you, like that's completely fine. You don't need to copy like mine um, just exactly. I do think it's important that all the things I talked about are at least bound to something because they're gonna be quite useful for you. Quickly before I move on, I'll talk about finger placement. So what I normally do is I just have three fingers on uh, QWE and then I have my thumb on the space bar. So so I can easily like tap it like this. And also I have my uh, pinky finger on shift. So if I ever need to quick cast anything, I can, or quick cast with indicator, excuse me, I can do that. And I just use my three fingers for pretty much everything else, for flashing, for QWER, for pressing A. Um, so again, I would say just comfort is key. Um, but yeah, like I think three fingers works well for me. And I know a lot of people play with four, a lot of people play with three. So I think, yeah, just pretty much whatever. Next up, we have mouse speed, camera speed, video settings, etc. all that sort of stuff. Now, mouse speed is actually really important. You should set this to 50, and the reason is it will be one-to-one -one with your mouse speed outside of leaks. That's really important. Um, and also, if you haven't done so already, you should search on Windows, like your mouse settings, make sure it's set to six out of 11 and no acceleration. That way, it'll remain consistent. So if you can keep it kind of consistent on your desktop as well as in-game, it'll be really easy for your brain to kind of start building um, an idea or, you know, just keeping it consistent your brain will begin to know like how far you need to move the mouse for what distance and that'll be really important for especially like um hitting skill shots and stuff like that really guys it is quite important so yeah just set your mouse speed to 50 and your camera move speed and your camera move speed with keyboard all to 50 and that will be pretty much fine i would recommend um moving camera on revive obviously for when you respawn you can put mouse button drag scroll which will allow you to scroll the map but um, just by like holding the middle mouse button in, but I don't really use it. So it's not something I'd recommend. Smooth camera, definitely don't have that off. And camera lock mode. Now this is something that I believe by default is set to per side offset. This basically means that depending on which side you're on, it'll offset the camera slightly, whether you're blue side or red side. I would just recommend setting this to fix, but also I think it's something that most people don't even notice. So if you're wondering why your camera is slightly off center, this is probably why, um, but well, maybe you'll notice it now that I've, I've let you know, but I think just set this to fix and it'll probably be uh, the best for you. So video settings, I just left pretty much everything on default. Um, these are all just like default medium settings. I don't think this really matters as long as you're getting like a decent amount of FPS. Um, obviously, if you're lagging a lot, you should probably set it lower and like you can set it higher and it probably doesn't matter too much. All color settings, I just set to default. So this is pretty much, I didn't change at all. And I really don't think video settings matter much in League. You know, in some other games, um, video settings are kind of irrelevant are, are relevant because you want like the extra FPS or things are easier to see on those settings. But League, in my opinion, doesn't really have anything like that. Now, interface settings. This one's kind of interesting. So I have my HUD scale at 33. I don't think this should be too big. You can make it smaller and it's probably fine, but I really wouldn't recommend making your HUD too big. You don't want it to take up a ton of your screen but obviously you do want to be able to see it because you want to be able to see your cooldown. So I probably wouldn't make it too small and probably wouldn't make it too big, um, but I don't think it really matters that much. Again, if it's just something you're comfortable with, 33 is what I use um, and that's kind of fine. Everything else here, I think you can leave pretty much as whatever, although the minimap again, now 33 is just something I'm used to because the way this used to work is 33 used to be 100 on the previous uh, map settings. So I just had this on 100 before, which is now 33. So it's kind of something I've been used to. I think if you struggle with kind of seeing things on the map, you probably should have it bigger. Um, but I feel like a lot of people that do struggle with the map aren't so much struggling to look at the map. They're just struggling to um, like actually interpret the map and stuff like that, if that makes sense. So it kind of depends if you feel like your issue really is actually seeing the map, in which case I think you could try making it bigger and then it'll probably be good for you. But I think it is better in the long run if you can have it smaller because obviously... Um, there are kind of certain pockets of the lane where having a big mini map could be kind of problematic. You know, like um, if, for example, you were playing here and this like, you know, blocked a significant amount of your vision down here, although that's not super common. Also, um, I have map on left. That is something that doesn't really matter. You can have map on left or right and it's whatever. I just have it on left because I used to play StarCraft and the map was on left there. So I kind of got used to it. So lastly, I'm just going to do a run through of all the interface and game settings and which ones are important. I think these, they're pretty much whatever. Um, um, maybe having show health bars on is kind of important. Show names above health bars, this is kind of up to you. Uh, 
Um, it can be kind of useful to have like the summoner name if you play against certain players very often, like if you're high low, it can be kind of useful or you know if you're not sure maybe, if you're still new to the game what champs are, you could have that on. But I think, personally I just play with um, health bars off, or sorry names above health bars off, but I actually have it on in my smurf so that probably tells you that I don't really notice it that much, I don't really look at it to be honest, but... It's kind of personal preference. Now these next ones are pretty important. Screen flash on damage and screen flash on loss of control. I think these are quite important. So this means like if you get CC'd or you take damage while you're looking at something else. So let's say you're looking at mid or sorry, you're looking at top and you get hit or CC'd mid, your screen will flash, which is quite important just because if you're not paying attention while you're walking somewhere like this um, or if you're looking somewhere else. So I really like having that on. I think that's quite cool. Champion highlight on camera center. Now this is completely up to you, but a lot of people I've found do like struggle with like finding themselves in team fights and if you have this on it shows this arrow above your head while you're holding like space bar as we have before now a lot of people also find this distracting so it's really up to you and if i'm honest again i feel like i don't really notice it much in team fights but if you're having trouble like finding a champion um, in team fights you could find this useful to have like this big giant arrow above your head now, Legacy Cursor, now I actually have this different on different accounts and I didn't even notice until someone mentioned it in Twitch chat. Again, I really don't think it matters, just uh, personal preference, tooltips, pretty much whatever. Now, ability and attack display, uh, I think showing attack range, showing spell costs are both pretty important. Spell cost is actually really, really important just because you really need to know how much mana your combo and how your individual spells cost. So I really think that one's quite important. The rest of them, eh, it's sort of whatever. Ability cooldowns, you should definitely have this on. I find minutes and seconds to be the best because it's the easiest to just glance at and be like, okay, you know, my flash is on like a four and a half minute cooldown as opposed to just seeing just the seconds or just the minutes. So I think that's the best. Neutral camps, yeah, definitely should be on. Showing mini map on left, just literally personal preference. I got used to minimap on left, but it's whatever. Now allow minimap movement. I would recommend having this off, especially if you have a bigger minimap. So something that you will find is that, or at least something that I found is when I'd be kiting away from fights. So for me, it'd be if I'm kiting down, I would sometimes click the map and then I would click into their base and I would path towards them. And you guys, if you have your mouse or if you have your map on the right, we probably have the opposite thing. When you're kiting up, you might accidentally click the map and go into them. So I really, really recommend having this off find it quite annoying scoreboard and some of the names it's yeah it doesn't really matter team frames doesn't really matter now chat this is something i kind of talked about in my mindset video personally i have all chat on because it's i find all chat is not that toxic but i find allied tox ch allied chat to be quite toxic so i normally have that turned off and i don't think other than timestamps as in um like flash cooldowns and stuff like that having allied chat is really that important so i would probably just have it off Showing timestamps though, this is actually kind of important because if you, well, it's more like if you do have allied chat on and you want to show timestamps, then you can type like mid no flash and you can just like go back and look at the timestamp later and then work that out. Nice, my minions are destroying turrets. But yeah, it doesn't matter too much. Emotes, sort of whatever. Now combat text, I think you should have pretty much everything on. Um, the only one you maybe don't need is mana just because you should know kind of like what your mana costs are anyway but like I mean you can turn it on too. Um, now I don't actually know what's on by default but I think experience is another one that's kind of important to tell if you're in XP range or not because there's no other way of um, checking. So like if you're not sure whether you're still getting XP or not I guess you could like look at your bar down here but I think it's kind of useful to have on. Um, but yeah so that's it for interface let's move over to game. Um, these, we already talked about the camera settings. So, okay, yeah, here's another other uh, kind of interesting one, auto attack. Now, I recommend having auto attack off, but some people recommend having it on. So here's kind of the reasoning for it. If you have auto attack on, it means that you're basically never gonna miss um, weaving in auto attacks unless like you're constantly moving in between things. Um, but it does have some negative effects, which is, let's say you're trying to hold a freeze. Um, if you're like, you know, standing right here and you're trying to hold a freeze and you're looking at top lane, you will just be autoing. So I don't really like that um, for that reason. Also, there are certain champs where this can be bad. So a champion like Zoe, for example, where um, you really don't want to auto attack your bubble, you want to make sure you hit it with Q if possible. Um, so I think having auto attack off is better, but if you are used to auto attack on, eh, I guess it's not the end of the world, but I think it is better off than on. I guess like maybe the only advantage of auto attack on is that while you're, if you wanted to push the lane while you're looking somewhere else, like, but you can already do this by just um, pressing A and then just like leaving it right. So 
I don't think that's really that great an argument, but anyway, that is like a reason for it. Movement prediction. Now, as far as I can tell, this actually doesn't do anything. It just looks different. So yeah, I think this has been argued about a lot, but from what I understand, it doesn't actually do anything. It just like looks different. It says under slow network conditions, increase perceived responsiveness of your champion's movements. So I don't know, maybe if you're hyping, but it's only perceived responsiveness. So I'm not too sure. So turret range indicators, obviously only for co-op versus AI, doesn't matter. Now attack move on cursor. This is another one that is quite important. So um, having attack move on cursor means that your attack move will come from your cursor as opposed to your champion. So basically the way attack move by works by default is for example if i were to click um a it would just it would just attack the closest target so you can see i press a and it attacks the closest target now attack move on cursor means it attacks the closest target to your cursor as opposed to you so that means let's say even though i'm closest to this target if i want to auto attack the target at the back i can press a next to them so this is very, very important. Um, I would really recommend having this on, especially if you are going to be using A as opposed to just like right clicking on targets directly. Um, so I'd really recommend having that on. Now, last one, target champions only as a toggle. This is kind of up to you. So in the hotkeys, I believe, I actually can't even remember if I talked about it, but I believe, where is this? I believe it's down here. Yeah, actually, I forgot to talk about it. So target champions only, you should turn this or you should have this bound to something. It is quite useful for turret diving um, or hitting a target in a bunch of creeps. And then I think having it as a toggle is kind of nice because it means you can just tap the key and then you can see the cursor changes. And that means you will target champions only and then you can just tap it again to turn it back off. Some people hold this down. I think that's completely fine as well. If you can have a bound to something that's not too difficult for you. Um, but yeah, I think having... Just having that bound um, to begin with is quite important for turret dives and stuff like that. It, it really does make a difference in a lot of those situations, especially if someone's hiding behind a tower or if someone's hiding behind a bunch of creeps or something like that. And then having it as a toggle, personally, I found it easier that way. Um, but you know whatever works for you so guys that's going to be it for this video hopefully that covered everything you need to know about settings if there's something i do want you to take away from this video is that while there are a lot of like settings to turn on and a lot of things to bind within those settings and within those bindings for the most part you can set them to just whatever is comfortable for you you know there is still quite a lot of preference um, but actually having them bound in the first place is quite important so i would recommend doing that as always if you have any questions please leave them below don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you next time